So I made a really cool program for this thing called the Open Jam, and I'll put a link to that in the video description, but I wanted to show you what the program is. So the uh, way back in the annals of time, before we were typing things on uh, keyboards and displaying them on screens, the way that we interacted with computers was with switches and lights. And so if you've ever seen an Altair 8800 uh, or an MITS uh, MSI uh, 8080, uh, basically those were machines that you interacted with by flipping switches and that would light up certain lights and you could insert a program using machine language where that machine language is a series of zeros and ones to create what's called an operation code or an op code. And that's what this program does. This is the toy CPU. And you can see the files here that I uh, used to create this program. And I run it over a weekend. Uh, the uh, history of this in brief is that I teach uh, some university courses uh, at part time. And in one of those courses, we talk about uh, basic understanding of technology. And when we talked about programming, I thought it'd be interesting to have the students who are not computer science students write a simple program for a kind of virtual machine. And I had a prototype I'd written before, but this is a much cooler version of that, what's called Toy CPU Simulator. So let me go ahead and uh, start up the toy and you can see what I'm talking about. So this is meant to represent sort of a switches and lights field because the theme of the Open Jam this year is light in the dark. And that was a perfect fit for this uh, lights, uh, switches and lights model. So if I just start toy, you're going to see what happens is the toy will start up using a kind of model. It looks like a switches and lights. You can actually watch it boot uh, as it clears all the memory. And so that's what we're seeing right here on screen. It's going through all the counters from zero to 255. Every program instruction is in one of those uh, 256, zero to 255. Uh, counter uh, uh, locations. And uh, what we're looking at here on the bottom right is the mode that we're in. And so here you can see the machine, the virtual machine is turned on. So I've got the power light lit and I'm in what's called input mode. And the bottom of the screen, you can see a little hint as to what that means. And so input mode, I'm going to use the uh, up and down arrows to uh, uh, actually type in uh, or actually select an instruction. So I've already used the down arrow on here that can go from instruction or counter zero to counter one and get down arrow again. There's counter two, counter three, counter four, and so on. We're counting in binary. Now, when the machine booted up, when it did the initialization, it actually zeroed out all the instructions. That's why none of the other lights are lighting up at this point. Now, you can see a little card that's been representing a little piece of paper that's been taped to the front of this toy CPU simulator, and this has the list of the opcodes that this toy uh, CPU will actually recognize. It's meant to be a minimal instruction set computer. It's not meant to be a big fancy thing. It's just meant to represent a certain number of opcodes that let you do certain types of programs, really to kind of teach uh, programming. So let's actually go into counter zero. I'm going to use the arrow keys to go up to counter zero. And you can see the hint in the bottom of the screen. I use enter to go into edit mode. And so I'm going to hit enter. And now I'm in edit mode. So you can see in the bottom right hand side of the screen, the status lights have lit up to show that I'm no longer in input mode, that I'm now in edit mode. EDT indicates edit mode. And I've got a little uh, highlight on my uh, screen that shows which instruction I'm about to edit. And so now I can uh, just use the right and left arrows to select the bit that I want. And I want to write a simple program. So by the way, if I were to, to uh, hit space, that allows me to turn these bits on and off, right? So it's just a simple way to set uh, a, the, the bits using sort of a, a switches and lights model. And again, at the bottom of the screen, you can see the hint for edit mode is that I can use left and right to select the bit and I can use the space to flip that bit and I can use enter to say that I'm done. That puts me back into input mode. And again, you can see in the bottom right of the screen, uh, the light for EDT or edit mode is now turned off and I'm now back into input mode. And so now I can go down to uh, counter one and counter one has a zero instruction. 
Now on the left hand side, again, that little piece of paper that's been taped to the front of the uh, toy, you can see the different opcodes that are here. Very few opcodes, but you can actually still write some very interesting programs with this. It's a great, fun educational toy. Uh, if you were to, uh, let's, let's edit this and make this all zero. And so now the first instruction counter zero has all zero. And if I look on that little piece of paper there, it's the stop instruction. And that means that the, uh, the program, the, the, the toy will stop running the program at that instruction. So if I hit R on my keyboard, you can see on the hint when I'm in input mode, I can use R to run my program and you'll see the little status light will then turn off input and it'll turn on the run. And it's gonna now run my, uh, my program. So I'll hit R. And now it's running it and it has nothing to do and so it immediately stops now i've got a pretty long delay in here uh, and that's intended so that we can watch the program running this was meant for uh, initially for uh, undergraduate students who didn't really know much about uh, computers to actually watch a computer run so i intentionally added a nice long delay in there between the instructions Let's add a let's write a couple of very simple programs in here. I'm going to write a program that will just blink the lights on the accumulator. So these old CPUs, the basic way that you operate is you can have in a program that lives in uh, uh, 256 bytes of memory, 0 to 255. And the CPU also has an accumulator that you can operate on. You can load data into the accumulator from memory. You can add data to uh, the accumulator. You can subtract data from the accumulator, numbers from the accumulator. You can do bit shifts on it. You can do various uh, logical operations. You can see on the left-hand side on a little piece of paper, the different things that you can do. Most of them are pretty obvious, um, I think, but the uh, except for go to and if zero. So go to is going to jump to a specific uh, counter uh, in the program instructions. And if zero will also do a go to, but only if the accumulator has a zero value. So let's enter a very simple program. This is going to just do a, an exercise of loading values from memory. So I'm going to hit enter on counter zero and I'm going to enter edit an instruction. I want to add the load instruction uh, using that little piece of paper as my reference. The load instruction looks like that. And I hit return, I'm back into uh, input mode. Now, load requires an argument. It needs to load data from a specific place in memory. And so it really helps to write down your program on a piece of paper first, so you know where all the different memory locations are coming from. I've done that on my own side. You can't see it on camera, but I've, I've got it on my own side. And so I know that if I go down to instruction one, which is the uh, next instruction after obviously counter zero, uh, then I want to load my data from memory location seven. And so I want to just hit enter on here and remember how you count in binary. This is the ones place, the twos place, and the fours place. And so four plus two plus one is seven. And so this has entered a seven into counter one. If I hit enter on that, I can go back to input mode. I'm going to go down to instruction two or counter two, or I'm going to do another load instruction. So again, using my little piece of paper uh, that's been taped to the machine as a guide, this is the load instruction. And then on instruction three or counter three, I want to add the value eight. And so, uh, Again, this is the ones place, the twos place, the fours place, and the eights place. So with this light lit up, that is an eight. And I hit return on that, and now I've entered an eight into counter three. If I go down to counter uh, four, now I can enter another load instruction. So again, using my piece of paper as a guide, load looks like that. And now on counter uh counter nine i'm sorry that is the uh one two four now in, that's uh, that's instruction four so now if i go down to uh counter five i want to input the value of nine so i hit enter to go into edit mode and so this is the ones place the twos place the fours place the eights place and eight plus one is nine and then i go down uh one more and this is uh instruction six counter six and this is where i want the program to end now again if you look at the uh, little piece of paper stop is when you have zeros and 
that means I don't have to enter anything here. I did that so that way if you ran the uh, the toy on a on a when it freshly booted up, it was just going to stop. So I'm going to go back now down to uh, instruction or counter seven, and now I'm going to enter in the data that I was trying to load. So remember, it was doing three different loads. It was doing a load from uh, memory location seven, a load from memory location eight, and a load from memory location nine. So here uh, in seven, I'm going to just light up the right hand side of the lights I hit enter and we'll go down to uh, counter eight and hit enter on this one. I'm going to light up the lights on the left hand side and then on counter nine, I'm going to light them all up. And if I hit return on that and now I can run my program, right? So uh, we can use the arrow keys to go up and look at my program to see what the program looks like but I can just hit R and it will always run the toy from counter zero. So hit R and now we can watch it run. Again, there's a significant delay between uh, each instruction and fetching of memory, but you can see that now I've loaded the lights on the right-hand side, now the left-hand side, and now all of them. And now I have the instruction that says to stop the program. And now the program has stopped and it's put me back into input mode. Whenever it puts me back into input mode after running a program, it will always put me at counter location uh, zero. And so that's one program you can write to uh, you know, light up the lights on the toy. But there's another program you can do that will uh, add two numbers together. And so for this one, I'm going to uh, edit my program. And so here I'm in instruction zero, and I want to start by loading a value. So I'm going to load a value. And so instruction zero or counter zero is correct. It's load. And I go down to counter one. And I actually want to load this from memory location seven on my little piece of paper. I've written this down. And I want to load it from memory location seven, which is what I already have in counter one. Uh, in counter two, I want to do the add instruction. So I need to change what's on here. So I'm going to do an enter. And then uh, using that little piece of paper that's taped on the front of the toy as my reference, I want to do the add instruction. So add is going to be that. And that's the add instruction. And I hit return. And now I want to go down to instruction or counter three. And now I want to put in the value of eight because I'm going to load the value from uh, memory location seven. And I'm going to add a value that is stored in memory location eight. And so in three, counter three, I already have the value of eight. And so that's that's good. That works out for me. And I'll go down to instruction or counter four. And now I want to save this. Let's save this value somewhere. And so now I want to use the store instruction. So if I look on that little piece of paper that's taped to the front of my toy and hit return, I can now do the store instruction, which is that. That's the store instruction. And that is in uh, counter four. And now in counter five, I want to store this value in a particular memory location. And here I want to store it in memory location nine. And this is already a nine from what I had before. So that's great. And now I want to stop the program at counter uh, six, which it already is. And now I want to add, have the two numbers to add. So in seven, on, on counter seven, I want to have the first number to add. That's going to load it into memory. And so let's make it a simple number like the number one. And go down to uh, counter eight. And this is the second number that I want to add. And so let's just uh, hit enter on this and we'll edit this to say also the number one. And then it's going to store it in, in, in counter uh, nine, which right now is 255, which I'm going to leave because that way we can see that this memory location will get updated. Now, if I hit R, this will run the program from counter zero, and we can watch it add one plus one, and that will store it into memory location nine as two. And we'll also see it on the accumulator. So here we'll do R to run the program. And so now it's going to do a load of one, and then it's going to do an add of one, and now it's the accumulator is showing two, and now it's going to store that into memory location nine as the value of two.
And now let's put it back into input mode. And so if I hit return, uh, oops, I don't want to hit return. I want to go down to uh, memory location nine. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so nine has the value of two because that's what it had in the accumulator. And so this is a kind of a cute way to add numbers together. You can do the same kind of program to subtract numbers. Uh, and it's just, I think, a great uh, teaching tool and a fun little game that you can play on your own. There's no win condition on this one. It's more just a simulator. Uh, and that's it for the toy uh, CPU. I'm going to hit Q to quit the uh, the toy. And you can see the briefly, you see the light uh, change from input mode over to halt and on the lower right hand side. So I'm going to hit Q. And there it is, it's halting the machine, and I'm back at the DOS prompt. So what did you think of the toy? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, always uh, thank you very much for everyone who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. Uh, special thanks as well to these people who are supporting me at a higher level. Thank you very much for that. Uh, visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.